On March 22, 1765, the British Parliament passed the Stamp Act, imposing a direct tax on the American colonies who were accustomed to ruling themselves and levying their own taxes through their own representatives. For the first time in the 150-year history of the British colonies, the Americans were forced to pay tax not to their own local legislatures in America, but directly to England. Under the Stamp Act, the colonies were forced to pay money on a stamp that was to be affixed to every piece of paper they touched, including newspapers, pamphlets, bills, legal documents, licenses, almanacs, dice, and playing cards. The American colonists quickly united in opposition. On October 1, 2008, the rallying voices from millions of American citizens, Democrat and Republican alike, made calls to their representatives. Mr. President, I've received 91,000 phone calls and emails from California. 85,000 of them opposed to this measure. The taxpayers, I know that they're angry and mad as hell. Despite the people's overwhelming opposition to the legislature, Congress went ahead and hastily passed the $700 billion TARP, Troubled Asset Relief Program under the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act of 2008, and then signed it into law on October 3rd by President George W. Bush. In July of 1765, the Sons of Liberty, a grassroots underground movement, began organizing in opposition to the Stamp Act. Prominent leaders included Paul Revere, Thomas Young, who was a mentor of Ethan Allen, Benjamin Eads, a publisher of the Boston Gazette, a newspaper which sparked and financed the Boston Tea Party, which would come later, Patrick Henry, John Hancock, James Otis, who is usually attributed the phrase, taxation without representation is tyranny, John Adams, and his second cousin, Samuel Adams. Likewise, many ministers of the period began getting involved as well. One such minister was the Reverend Jonathan Mayhew, who bitterly opposed the Stamp Act and who coined the phrase, no taxation without representation, 15 years earlier in a sermon. On February 10, 2009, Charles Schumer made his infamous Porky Amendment remark concerning the debate over the nearly $800 billion stimulus package. And let me say this to all of the chattering class that so much focuses on those little, tiny, yes, Porky Amendments. The American people really don't care. Arrogant remarks like this from our elected non-representatives sparked outrage from the so-called chattering classes. A further slap in our faces occurred when Congress passed the bill without even reading it. But a bill that was supposed to be about jobs, jobs, jobs has turned into a bill that's all about spending, spending, and spending. When you look at some of the spending in this bill, it will do nothing about creating jobs in America. Tell me how spending $50 million for some salt marsh mouse in San Francisco is going to help a struggling auto worker in Ohio. It's about our ideas to help make this economy better. Our ideas about how to give American families and small businesses the ability to keep more of what they earn, to help their families, to help their businesses, to create more jobs. That's what the American people want. They don't want more spending on a, a couple hundred million dollars to uh, get the country ready for some national health plan, money that's going to go to the bureaucracy. They want to know how their budgets are going to be helped. And unfortunately, they're not. If all of that, of that wasn't enough, here we are with 1,100 pages. 1,100 pages, not, not one member of this body has read. 
Not one. There may be some staffer over in the Appropriations Committee that read all of this last night. I don't know how you could read 1,100 pages between midnight uh, and now. Not one member's read this. What happened to the promise that we're going to let the American people see what's in this bill for 48 hours? But nope, we don't have time to do that. On May 10th, 1773, Parliament passed the Tea Act. It maintained a three penny per pound import tax on tea arriving in the colonies. It also gave the near bankrupt British East India Company a virtual tea monopoly by allowing it to sell directly to colonial agents, bypassing any middlemen, thus underselling American merchants. The East India Company had successfully lobbied Parliament for such a measure. In September, Parliament authorized the company to ship half a million pounds of tea to a group of chosen tea agents. On February 17, 2009, despite the overwhelming protest and outrage against it, President Obama signed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, better known as the Stimulus Package, into law. An additional $787 billion was added to the already $700 billion from the previous administration. In October of 1773, colonists held a mass meeting in Philadelphia in opposition to the tea tax and the monopoly of the East India Company. A committee then forced British tea agents to resign their positions. In November, a town meeting was held in Boston endorsing the actions taken by Philadelphia colonists. Bostonians then tried but failed to get their tea agents to resign. A few weeks later, three ships bearing tea sailed into Boston Harbor. The government is promoting bad behavior. 